So not long ago, I made a video retrospective on the Xbox One generation, and if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. But my general opinion during that video was that it was ultimately a decent generation that just got off to a really shitty start. Well, with Xbox Series X and Series S here, along with a brand new year, I figured it'd be cool to look at the future of Xbox in this video and talk about why I think this has a possibility to be the greatest generation of gaming that Xbox has ever had. So let's get started. Now, when you ask people what the best generation for Xbox was, they'll be likely to tell you that it was the Xbox 360 era. And it's kind of hard to argue with that. Halo was hitting on all cylinders, and the Gears of War trilogy was introduced with critical acclaim. Forza was emerging as a big competitor in the racing genre with Motorsport and even Horizon towards the end of the 360's life. And we had third-party deals for games like Mass Effect, Oblivion, and Alan Wake. It felt like the 360 had something for everyone, and I feel like that's Xbox's goal for this generation, is to offer something for everyone. Like, when you look at the studios that Microsoft has, it becomes readily apparent that this is an incredibly diverse lineup of talent. From sometimes silly and whimsical stories from studios like Rare, to groundbreaking RPGs from studios like Bethesda, Obsidian, or In Exile, to narrative-driven action from studios like The Coalition or Ninja Theory, or even first-person shooters from studios like 343, id Software, and Machine Games. I mean, all those studios specialize in that stuff. And you also can't forget The Initiative, which is working on a first-person perfect dark. And there's a bunch more studios that I haven't even mentioned yet. But my point is that there's a ton of studios offering an incredibly unique lineup of games for just about anyone and everyone to enjoy. And I think that this is something that really works in Xbox's favor this generation, because let's be honest, I love the exclusives that PlayStation is putting out, but they don't have near the variety of games that Xbox is set to have this generation. And it all starts this year with the release of Halo Infinite, which seems to be taking a spiritual reboot approach to the Halo franchise, which I think is only appropriate seeing as they got quite a bit of backlash for the Halo 5 story. And after Halo, the next big game for Xbox will likely be Starfield from the newly acquired Bethesda. And me being a big RPG fan, this is one of my most anticipated games from Xbox this entire generation. I love games that set me loose in big open worlds with huge stories and plenty of side quests, and that's exactly what Bethesda is known for. And as of right now, very little is known about Starfield other than it's Bethesda's first new IP in over 20 years and it's a space RPG. But if it's anything close to the scale of Elder Scrolls or Fallout, then we know it's going to be massive and that's what has me hyped. And then once you get past Starfield, it's going to be a pretty big snowball effect of games coming for Xbox. When you think of the fact that they've got 23 studios and many of those studios have multiple different teams working on different projects, like it's not out of the realm of possibility that we see a AAA game from Xbox about three to four times a year once the ball gets rolling in late 2021, early 2022. And this is such a stark contrast from where Xbox was at the beginning of the Xbox One generation with only a handful of studios and a handful of games. And that's a big reason why I think this generation could be so special for Xbox. I mean, this past year and even before this past year, we've kind of entered into this golden age of gaming where people are playing more games than ever before. And for Xbox, it's not just about the games, it's also about how those games are delivered to you. And Game Pass is an absolute juggernaut right now, and this is before we've even seen the release of some of these huge games like Halo Infinite or Starfield. And it's hard for me to speak for anyone other than myself, but I know it's a huge relief for me personally to know that I don't have to pay full price for the next big Bethesda game, or the next Gears game, or Forza. And I can just turn on my Xbox and boot up Game Pass and all those games will be there for me to enjoy on day one. And that's not to say that I won't buy some of these games. I mean, I'll buy a lot of them just to support the developer because I like their games and I like what they do. Like how I bought Gears 5. I didn't have to buy Gears 5, I get the Ultimate Edition and Game Pass Ultimate for free. But for a game like that, I'll buy it because I support the Coalition. I think they're really a super talented studio that gets overlooked in a lot of cases. And I did the same thing with Hellblade, Sin with Sacrifice. I think I was late to play Hellblade. I, I think I 
played it right at the beginning of last year. I played it in Game Pass, I absolutely loved it, and then I went and purchased it because I just want to support the developer and what they do. And I'm going to do the same thing with Halo Infinite once I pick up the Legendary Edition. Hopefully it comes with some kind of awesome statue, or like how they did the helmet with Halo 3 Legendary Edition. I hope it comes with something like that. That stuff is awesome. But I'm getting off the topic here, and what I really want to say is, when you combine what Microsoft was able to do in terms of getting the most powerful console and the most affordable console for next gen, combine that with the fact that Xbox Game Studios is now 23 studios strong and everything those studios create will be put into Game Pass day one, and all of this is why I think this will be Xbox's best generation yet. But what do you guys think? How do you think this generation will be compared to previous generations for Xbox? And also, what's your most anticipated first party Xbox game? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're thinking. Leave a like if you liked the video and please subscribe if you would be so kind. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.